it's our uh, it's our two year key day anniversary. Yeah, so we thought we'd do something a little different this time since we only get to do it once <laughs> because this is our second year of uh, you know since we got our key. Yep. Uh, which would have been August nineteenth, so we're yep. a couple of days ago. Uh, but it's been awesome. It's been a hell of a ride. I mean, we've been doing this ride for two years now and we have no intention of getting off. Nope. nope. The ride's good. So far, so good. We're I enjoying mean... it. On top of that, um, this is actually our 100th vlog that yeah. we're putting out. Now, Sarah and I differ on this a little yeah. bit. Her calculation has it at 102, Two 103. Or something like yeah. That. yeah. And my calculation is 10, 100. So. But let's all pretend it's just the 100th anniversary, it's, okay? It's the 100th <laughs> vlog. Um, and we want to thank you guys so much for, yeah. for following us and for, you know, making us a part of your life. We're so happy to take you on the journey with us. It's been, uh, as we say, a hell of a couple of years. And we're going to continue to bring you more and more of the people that come and visit yeah. us, um, the the adventures that we have with both the Chateau and... Yes, more renovations. <laughs> and, and there will be more renovations. Um, but what we thought we would do for this vlog is actually show you a bit of what has happened over the last two years. Yeah. Just bit of a recap. Of our, some of our favorite moments. Yeah. Other ones that stand out for you? Um, I mean, they've all been amazing. I think the thing that gets me really um, emotional or, or, you know, when I stop to think is how many people we've met. Yeah. You know, the, the unbelievable parade of people that we've had come through the Chateau in two years um, that we never knew yep. before. <laughs> and uh, it's been amazing. From our amazing friends in the Chateau community, from Stephanie and Philip and... Vivian and Simon and yeah. Patrick, Patrick and Stewart, Stewart and yeah, yeah and Julia the lawn game, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> the guys at, at Puy Vidal, yeah. all those guys. It's been amazing to meet them, um, and of course, you know, traveling, you know, with Curtis and uh, yeah. you know, just everybody. It's been amazing, and then of our, course our guests as well. We've had just yeah. phenomenal guests, yeah, and you know, to to the amazing people who have come from all over the world to uh, you know do an event here, both yeah. as a participant and. Um, you know, obviously running the workshops. And we cannot leave this without, uh, you know, saying a special thanks to both Elska and Stuart. Um, and to all those people and to anybody that we have forgotten, and I'm sure there's people that we've forgotten <laughs> to mention by name, but um, you guys are all amazing. We love you all. And thank you so much for being a part of our lives. And we will continue that journey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. <laughs> We are coming to you from the terrace of our chateau. Yay. We're not quite sure how that happened. Oh no, we're darn sure how that happened. <laughs> yeah. It's been really exciting. Yeah, it's been a long, long time coming, but um, we I think we both feel like we've come to the end of a very long journey and now the beginning of yet another very long journey, but uh, very excited to be here. And I think what's kept us going the whole time, every time we were having moments of frustration or you know, delays that were taking too long. And we thought, would we ever kind of get to this point? And we would always just say, okay, let's just, let's just picture ourselves sitting out on the terrace of the Chateau, drinking a glass of wine mm -hmm. and saying, gee, now what was all that fuss about? That wasn't so hard after all. <laughs> so here we are, we've got a glass of wine and it's just fantastic. And it all seems quite worthwhile right now. Yeah. I mean, it has, it's only been a couple of days, so it's a little raw, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. Funny thing is both of us have had moments of absolute giddiness whilst we're, uh, you know, whilst we've been standing here, frankly, last night on this very veranda, I was um, just in hysterics and just looking around going, oh my God, all of this land, how on earth do we own all of this land all of a sudden? Um, but it's super exciting and the house is awesome and has been very comfortable. Um, we've, we've slept a couple of nights here and got good night's sleep. Um, so peaceful. It is very peaceful. We've said it before, but this time it's for real. We just had our fingerprints done. We just gave our photograph. We are now officially allowed to stay in France. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was a sojourn. But yes, we are now official. We've gone to the prefecture. We've done the paperwork. They were happy. Um, and we are good for five years. We have our Brexit visa. Ah! 
it's been an absolute sojourn to try and get this here. Um, but it's finally here, which means we have a change of clothes. Yay! <laughs> we don't have to live out of a suitcase anymore. <laughs> Steve's kind of happy that his stuff is here. This is how happy we are right now. <laughs> Honestly, this has been so long in the making. Oh, and to see our stuff see. that we haven't looked at in four months. I can see your crate. I can see your crate with your artwork. It's looking good. It is looking good. It's looking so good. Look at that. Oh, the artwork is intact. We'll do a quick recap of our visit so that Sasha can give you an update. We are um, incredibly honored and excited to have Sasha Dench and her team here. Um, it, it's a funny story how this happened, but Sasha is the founder and CEO of Con Conservation Without Borders. I can't even say it. I'm fangirling so much. <laughs> so, me too, maybe, by the way. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll let you do a little introduction about what your, your organization is about. Yeah. And then we can tell the funny story of how you're here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, Conservation Without Borders, I founded on the back of an expedition I did uh, in, from the Russian Arctic to the UK following migrating swans. Uh, but I did it by flying with them in a paramotor, so basically a parachute with a uh, big propeller on your back. And from that, we use that to engage lots of different people in how to save swans over many different countries. And I was made you an ambassador for migratory species. They are kind of complicated to conserve. And to carry out more of that kind of work, because migratory species around the world are some of the most threatened, uh, we set up this organization so the plan is to keep following migrating species around the world and use the journeys and the stories of not only the animals but also the people on the way to um, get people excited about helping us save them which is how to deal with pandemics but we found ourselves on this return journey in gambia for example where all those international agreements people have signed up to for example uh, one of the requirements is that each country deal with their own surveillance and also their own um, response to a bird flu outbreak. Uh, yeah, well, and I guess that what I tried to use it for is to raise the profile and create a voice for people along the flyway, quite often small groups who um, don't have much connection and aren't necessarily heard. So um, yeah, just a, we just found an area where a bit of support for some people on the ground. They're smart, they're really capable, they're really yeah. willing, they just need a bit more of a hand. And uh, when they were looking for advice on, you know, things in the field are never quite what they are on paper. Yeah. There was nobody they could call. They were being sent web links and it's <sighs> web links to some quite complex English. And whilst they speak English, it is a second language and yeah. it's not exactly the same English. And it's a quite technical language, you know, yeah. documents yeah. of hundreds of pages. So they just need someone on the end of the phone, a bit of extra money for fuel. A bit of extra training it's yeah. not that much and really. when we say a bit like you said 1500 would go a really long way to yeah. protecting this or, yeah. or giving these people the boost they need to do their yeah. their local work yeah so yeah i'm going to kind of throw a, sh a shout out to the chateau community and see if we can come up with uh, those funds for those people because it does it happens globally and it impacts locally so it's you know absolutely we're all we're all concerned about it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarah and Steve, hello from Southeast Asia. I wanted to record this as a quick update uh, for you and maybe to your viewers as well, because we've had some news on our responses to the work we did on the bird flu outbreak in the Gambia. And I think that this is a really amazing example of how lots of small actions from lots of people like donations and comments on a chateau vlog for example can be used to snowball into something bigger and that can help us grow momentum so let me give you a couple of those quick updates with first of all we managed to raise enough funds to um, give the emergency support we needed to the gambians uh, and also to arrange the emergency ppe to get to them uh, we also drafted an open letter um, with all of that information. We got signatures from people, uh, conservation experts all around the world, different parts of the world, all outlining just practically what was missing in our bird flu response. We drafted that all up and sent it to a few people, but we included in that the fact that it wasn't just experts that were interested in this issue. It actually had general public interest, including, for example, media coverage and the, the Chateau vlog. 
and on the back of that the UK government responded and not only did they turn around really quickly and make uh, experts available to the Gambians which was fantastic uh, they also made £125,000 available to fund some of the Gambian response and also some further work that could help lots of other countries in a similar situation uh, and that was great so we then also spoke to them about the uh, complexity of some of the documentation so they've agreed to work on some more user-friendly materials that people can use uh, in an emergency situation so all of that was great then on the back of that we also managed to have conversations with the global aviation industry so initially that was just responding to uh, the need to ship essential equipment uh, to countries from places that are producing it and to do that quickly and there is already an, an existing aviation industry response to humanitarian disasters but there isn't to a wildlife and a wildlife cross humanitarian issue like bird flu so they agreed to consider that but part of that conversation they actually opened up and said would you be interested in a bigger conversation about how we cut down the number of bird strikes on uh, aircraft around the world so that could lead us to actually a project which could end up saving a load more birds so there you go that was my rapid fire summary of how you go from a vlog a lovely stay at the end of our expedition which was fantastic to us a vlog put up on your channel and then the responses from the audience that have helped us to do all of that so yeah thanks um, and for being a constant inspiration well that got me right in the feels thank you to everyone who commented and donated it's time to make merry the chateau needs a little little tlc and a little happiness for christmas so we're trying to use found objects which um, is a little bit challenging, but we're getting greenery from here and there, not denuding anything. So follow me, we're gonna see what else we can find. Vloggers, New Year. it's a vlogger's new year. We we have been to Venice a number of times, and um, the first thing, of course, is comfortable shoes because there are no cars. We can take the Vaporetti or we can um, take the gondola. Thank you for everything. You've worked so hard. It's so weird to to, to leave. leave. Well, here we are having a lovely, lovely dinner with our wonderful friends. There's Julia, Carolina. Cheers. <laughs> so cheers, guys. Cheers. I love the interior balcony. So welcome, welcome. Oh Santa Sanz Thank you. We're so glad to have you guys here. Um, I had a little, I had a little deal with our local boulangere, who is also our local pétassière, who is excellent, so shout out to Boulangerie Falco, um, where I asked if I could do a thing, which is unusual in France, which is put, in honor of Canada Day, maple syrup into our desserts this evening. Bon appétit. So, bon appétit. Merci bon appétit, merci. This is a group, this is Emmy. Uh, and her husband, and she owns a chateau about uh, an hour, hour and a half south of here. We're probably going to knock that down at some point, but that's in the future to come. Yeah, oh, so it's falling. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah. good because that way I can get this around the table. All right. So. Coming together. Maurice, just let it drop. Do not dive after it. Since we can't win the battle of you standing correctly on the ladder, the 
I absolutely refuse to let you have a header. And of course, what is taken apart must be put back together. Shout out to Laura for helping us wallpaper the dining room after Elska and Mo took it apart. And of course, we've been working on the soft goods. So we've been making headboards and we've been making curtains. Hi, Sophie Ann. And lots and lots and lots of curtains with the main sewing machine or with my treadle sewing machines, because why wouldn't you? So many sewing machines have come into my life and I've been so happy. We've been out on some adventures with each other and with some friends. I think I got a, a shot of you guys with Rialto Bridge behind, so if it worked. At the right time of day. Hi everybody, well we got onto a gondola when in Venice, right? You must do the gondola, so. And fortunately, our friends are going to be in the boat behind us. Boy. So we are in gondolas, dressed to our nines. The paparazzi are everywhere around us. <laughs> we know Ramses is a prolific warrior. Yes. But here it's really indicated. Ramses is here, striking an enemy, holding him up by the arm. And in the middle of everything else, we're setting up our event business. I think they're doing a fantastic job myself. <laughs> yeah, and they have, you'll have to ask them, but they were having so much fun. Oh my Good. Life. Good. Yeah. The, Results are fantastic for such a. <laughs> Why do I pay more for that? Yeah. Oh, okay. I eat that one. Oh, okay. All right. So, what we're going to do here. Um, <laughs> I want it very clear that this was your idea and Why? not mine. <laughs> it really was. And I've had so much fun doing it. And I've been so excited about coming. All right. I'll get you sorted. Come on now. Yeah, look, <laughs> look at you. Oh, she's a vision. That's quite lovely. But look at that handsome guy. Yeah. This is just the sort of geeking out I like to see happen. <laughs> We've got a pair of photographers enjoying their opportunity to photograph something a little different. Doing a little portraiture, which I don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, but Simon. I could, I, I could put you on a label for the story the story I won't ask for permission. Can I gush a little bit because we were <laughs> so super pleased to get a couple of small pieces from from both of these guys. Um, thank you so much for that. We will definitely find them, try to play somewhere in the house. I cannot believe this is happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Okay, keep going. Magic. Should we have a, should we have a, 
ever want to fight? Yes. <laughs> Live out our childhood dreams. Okay. What's even happening right now? <laughs> if you'd like advance notice of what's coming in 2024, sign up for our newsletter. So today, I am doing something I haven't done in a couple of years, maybe a little longer. Uh, but we're in the village of Tutorak, which is about 10 minute drive from, from the chateau, and they are having a plein air painting festival. Yay! So yeah, I decided to, to dive in. So I've, I've got two canvases. We'll see how far I get on those, but um, Tutorak's a beautiful little village. It's right on uh, a you know, stunning river. There's lots of opportunity for painting here. The, the actual village itself is quite pretty and you know, it's just green everywhere you can see. So let's see what I can find. I'm sort of at the halfway point now of uh, creating this piece, as you can see behind me. And there's the scene. So I've greeked in all the details and sort of the, the structure of it, and I feel pretty comfortable with the layout. Now it's a matter of filling in some, you know, bits and pieces and make it feel genuine and give it a bit of life. And, you know, so that's my next goal. Cool. Decided to sort of leave it at that for now. Um, leaving a lot to be desired for myself, but, you know, it's, it's an accurate representation. It's just not quite to the level that I wanted it to be, but it's very, very hot. It's noon and I think I need a break. So I'm going to stop for now. So this is the absolutely beautiful spot of Tortorak. Um, you can see there's a medieval abbey here but absolutely stunning views to paint. And you can see some artists in the island here in the middle of the river that are working away. And I'm about to join them because how can you not with that view? Hey. All right guys, well, Here's painting number two. Uh, I wasn't happy with it when, uh, when I started or about halfway through, but I'm pretty comfortable with the way it ended up. I think a little extra oomph now and again, uh, you know, I might retouch it in studio, but yeah, not bad. There's the scene. So we have a good friend of ours, um, Hazel, who lives down the road from us. You might remember her from, uh, from the exposition we had, and she's also painting in the plein air. And, Look at the phenomenal results of her work. I'm very, 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 very impressed with it, frankly. I love the color tones. I love the looseness of it. Thank you very much. Yeah. So well done. How was your day? It good was one? good. It was really good. I chose a good spot underneath the shade. You did. <laughs> and yeah, I've had fun. I mean, painting all day. What's better? Hazel and Steve having a bit of a, a chit chat about the works. Did you have a nice day, Hazel? Yeah, I had a lovely day. Yeah. Lots of painting with my hands. Yeah. Sign of an accomplished artist, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's yeah. definitely some good work in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some, Stunning. some really eye catching stuff there. Yeah. Quite a range, too, which is nice to see. Yeah, there's pastels, there's watercolors, sort of that the marker style that you did. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a good day. Um, I'm exhausted. I am so hot. <laughs> I think it was 33 degrees in the shade today. Yeah. Um, so my piece got entered, um, went up for auction, didn't sell. But almost nothing with, did. I think only one piece actually yeah. did sell in the end. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. 
fortunately, Hazel won um, second, second place, prize. I think it was, yeah, which yeah. is awesome. So happy for her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do more of this again. You know, it is it is fun. Yeah. Maybe not so hot. <laughs> I'm so glad you got out and painting again. There we go. All right. Till next time.